thank y'all so, so much for coming out. We are so, so excited for our online friends. We're doing both an in-person event here at Clarity Fitness in Decatur, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, as well as for our Zoom community. So thank y'all all so much again. I'm going to be using my phone for some notes really quick, but this is very casual. So if anybody has any questions or concerns or anything, or if y'all suddenly can't hear us, please, please, please let us know. And then we'll pass it over to Fringish in just a second. So first, our big purpose of today is to rejuvenate and restore everyone coming back into the back to school season. So whether you are feeling that firsthand from yourself or family members, or you're just feeling that chapter change, we want you to be able to fill your cup and feel restored coming into this new section of the year. And we're really, really excited to do that with some of our amazing sponsors that we have here today. We also are doing a back to school supplies drive for the local Decatur City Schools. So if y'all have already donated in the box out front, awesome. And for our online friends or people here in person, we're accepting uh, Venmo donations as well. And we'll cut a check and write that out to the Decatur City Schools when we deliver all the supplies. So the Venmo for that is my full name, Abby, A-B-B-E-Y dash Griffith dash one. And if you want that, um, that's already written in the chat for our virtual friends. And if everyone in person wants that, totally let me know and I can get that info to you. Next, I want to do a huge thank you to both of our sponsors for being here today. We have the amazing Dr. Tracy of Get Balanced Physical Therapy, who is going to do a brief introduction about her business. And then we're going to pass it over to Steph Laney, who is our amazing astrologer, who is going to give a tidbit about all the awesome things that she is doing as well. And all of these are opportunities and things that our online family can do and get involved in as well and just learn about how to restore themselves in these different different facets of life. And then we'll pass it over to Fringish after these brief intros. So thanks again and pass it to Tracy. <laughs> you have to stand here-ish so the Zoom fam can see. <laughs> Is that good? I think so. Yeah. All right. Zoom family. Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy with Get Balanced Physical Therapy and Wallet. I focus on fixing back pain and comfort from home. So that includes um, any sciatica pain, any aches and pains when you get out of bed in the morning, when you go from sitting to standing, getting out of your car, if you got pain or over the foot nipples, I like to call it pain in your peaches, you can give me a call. Um, I also do therapeutic massage and stretch sessions. I do that here at the Flower Indicator um, on Wednesday afternoons from about 3 to 3 o'clock to about 7 p.m. I have women only, and you can find the appointment link on Clarity's uh, page uh, under the services tab. It's at the bottom of that tab. It says deep stretch and massage. You just click that link and you can find all the information to set up a appointment with me. Um, I'm so excited to see you guys and I'm loving Clarity Cater and I hope that you all come and see me very, very soon. Dr. Tracy, we get balanced with Clarity and wellness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Steph will share about her amazing astrology practice. Yay. <laughs> I don't stand much farther back. <laughs> but very tall. <laughs> Hi, Zoom family. I, I, I really thank you so much for, for having me here. I've loved getting to talk to some of you about your charts. I am one part of a team at NoLevelLine.com. We have two coaches and a yoga practitioner and training, which is my sister back there, who some of you may have talked to. Um, so yes, I'm a professional coach and a professional astrologer. Um, I also do a lot of energy work and stuff like that. Uh, so our focus is kind of spirituality outside of religion. Um, we really feel at no level line that you can't do deep healing without the spiritual component, which we define as knowing your inner light and really getting to see and and come to know and be comfortable with that inner power and inner life that exists within you. And that's how we define spirituality very simply. And we find that when you start to open that in your life, whether it's through the language of astrology or meditation, all of these different things, um, maybe just going out to the forest for you, and you start to tap into that inner light, your life starts to transform. So that's why we're no level line, because you know yourself better, you know that inner power better. You, you love that self just as it is, and then your life starts to align more and more and more day after day. So that's what my work is about. Um, I do astrological natal chart readings, which is where we sit down with your chart, 
We look at who you are, your energy signature, who you came to be, what you came to do with your life, who you came to be in relationship with, some of these things. And um, it's just a hugely amazing tool for getting to know yourself better and kind of working in that life in the space. So yeah, um, nolevelaline.com. You can find us on Instagram at nolevelaline. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching. We have community groups where uh, women can come together, some on Zoom that's all around the country and world. So there's people that aren't from America. Um, and then in-person groups as well. So uh, where we just come, guided meditation, and uh, set intentions for each other, that kind of thing. So it's it's a, it's a beautiful thing. We'd love to have you join us. Thank you so much for having me. Yay, thank you. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> yeah. Well, thank you again so, so much for coming out. We're going to pass the mic over to Fringish, who is my new favorite person in the world. And they have just been such a huge light, such a huge support. And they are so well informed about all things accessible yoga, all things finding your peace and filling your cup back up. So we're definitely going to leave this session feeling amazing and restored and have tons of ways that yoga can work itself into all of our lives in all types of different day-to-day -day scenarios. So thank you again so much for coming and Fringish, thank you for being here. We're so excited to have you and I will pass you the mic. <laughs> thank you so much, Abby. Um, and thank you. It's so nice to virtually be with all of you. Um, my name is Shannon. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm here in Toronto, Ontario right now. So um, I have ties to Georgia, but I haven't been there in a while. So if you notice sounds here, I'm in an urban environment. Um, so be aware there might be sirens, loud talking. There's a thunderstorm right now. So um, <clears throat> uh, pardon any, any noises that come up. Uh, but today, <laughs> um, I wanted to talk um, a bit about how we can use yoga in our daily life and some of the aspects of yoga that are really helpful for stress relief. Uh, <clears throat> so first, if we're um, not aware, uh, we have um, the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. So our sympathetic nervous system is flight or flight. It's the thing that kind of pushes us when we're anxious, when we're scared. Um, and then we have the parasympathetic nervous uh, system, which is rest and digest. So generally when we're feeling anxious, when we're stressed out, we tend to spend a lot of time in that sympathetic um, response. And so what we wanna to try to do is move ourselves into the parasympathetic so that our body can relax and when we relax, that's when things like digestion and cellular regeneration happen. So it's really important for us to be able to move ourselves out of that. And there's a few different ways we can do that. And yoga is something that is really helpful for that. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of baked in <laughs> to yoga. So oh, one of the things that we can do is increase our vagal tone. So if you're not familiar with the vagal nerve, um, it runs from the top of the head down to the intestines. And it's responsible for that switch from parasympathetic to sympathetic. And we, as we get older, or if we experience a lot of trauma, or if we have a lot of stress, uh, we can lose vagal tone, which means that it's harder and it takes longer for us to switch from flight or flight into rest and digest. So there are a few different things that we can do to increase vagal tone. And a lot of those practices are actually part of our yoga practice. So we'll talk about a few of those things today. We'll move through a little bit of movement. I'll offer seated and standing options. Um, so no matter where you are, <laughs> you have those options. Um, and we'll finish with a meditation um, a grounding meditation, which is something that we might be able to come back to on our own um, to, again, help ourselves find our center and help ourselves relax a bit. <clears throat> so we're going to start with a little bit of grounding and uh, breath work. Uh, so <clears throat> one of the things that we can do to help ourselves uh, kind of regain our calm throughout the day would be pranayama or breath work. And for this, um, we're going to take a few moments and find ourselves a comfortable seat. Um, it doesn't have to be any prescribed way. It might be helpful for us if our feet are making contact with the ground, 
We might want to notice the sit bones against the chair. If we're seated on a mat, uh, we can be seated whatever way is comfortable for us. We'll take a few moments and notice our surroundings. Kind of notice what sounds are around us. Maybe if there's anyone in um, our, our kind of bubble so that we're aware and you know nothing shocks us or surprises us too much. And if we like, we can choose to close our eyes or we can just have a soft gaze, whatever works for us. We might have the hands somewhere against the body, maybe on the lap, maybe on the belly. Some folks like to have the hands over at center. Anything that feels comfortable for us. And we might start with a few deep breaths, maybe in through the nose and out through the mouth if that's helpful. If not, we can breathe however is helpful for us. Maybe releasing on the exhale of the sigh or vocalization. <sighs> and these types of vocalizations are really helpful uh, because we can stimulate the vagus nerve through the back of the throat. So if we like, we can sigh or we can make a humming noise. Hmm. Whatever we need. And when we've had our fill of that particular type of breath or sound, we might find our way back to our natural breath, whatever that looks like for us. And we'll notice each inhale and exhale. Right now, we're not trying to change anything. We're just noticing. We might notice where we feel the inhale and where we feel the exhale. We might notice the sensation of breath in the nose or throat, maybe the heart space, the belly. On our exhale, we might feel the belly soften, the heart space lower, warm breath, maybe coming out through the nose or mouth. We'll spend the next few moments just witnessing the breath. Sometimes this act of witnessing in itself is enough to help us slow down, to find our center, to find our connection to where we are in this moment. Sometimes we still need a little help. So if that's the case, we might start to lengthen the exhale. So maybe extending the exhale by just maybe two or three seconds even. Coming back to the inhale. Taking our extended exhale. We'll continue this for a few more breaths. Letting our body know that we are somewhere that we can relax. That we're not facing any immediate threats. Beautiful. And when we're ready, we'll kind of let go of the breath. And we might start to notice sensations in the body. We might notice anywhere that feels a little sore or a little tight. Just so that we can be as kind to ourselves as possible today. We also might start to notice anywhere that feels like it needs to move or stretch so that we can give ourselves what we need today. So once we've taken this inventory, we might slowly start to bring a little bit of movement back into the body. So maybe wiggling the fingers, the toes, the head and neck. <clears throat> If we noticed any areas that really wanted to move or stretch, we can offer that to ourselves now, taking any intuitive movement that feels good. 
and maybe slowly begin to blink the eyes open if that feels good. So by taking a little bit of time to focus on the breath, we can ground, and sometimes that's all that we need. Um, something else that we can do is we can engage in flowing movement. So flowing movement is something else that increases vagal tone. Once we get into a rhythm, we can continue. It can help calm us down. Um, so we're going to come through a couple of half sun salutations, about four. Um, so we're going to go through seated and standing. So if we are seated, we'll find our feet a comfortable distance apart. Some people like them really close together. I like mine a bit further apart to make space for the belly, maybe even bringing the belly between the legs. Grounding down through the feet, grounding down through the sit bone where we're making contact with the chair or the mat if we're seated. Finding length through the top of the head. We might bring the arms down to the sides, palms forward, and we'll start with two breaths. Just again, noticing the breath. On our inhale, we'll reach the arms up for upward salute. If we feel the shoulders crunching up near the ears, we might roll them down and back. We might even come into a little bit of a back bend, bringing the hands behind us, shining the heart forward slightly. Beautiful. When we're ready, we might bring the arms down to the sides, hinging forward at the hips. Maybe bringing the hands down to the thighs, down to the ground for our forward fold. When we're ready on our inhale, we might come to a half fold. So we're finding length from the spine to the sit bone. We're still hinged, hinging forward at the hip. And on our exhale, we might release back into our forward fold. Grounding through the feet, we might reach the arms up, back into our upward salute or back bend, whatever feels most comfortable. Then we'll bring the arms down through heart center and come back into our seated Tadasana. So that's our seated half sun salutation for standing. I'm just gonna set my chair to the side here for a moment. <clears throat> if you're seated, we can follow the same movements. If we're standing, I'm just going to turn to the side and you all can see. We can use blocks in our practice if you like. We're finding our Tadasana. If we're standing, we might like to take a moment and notice if we have a neutral pelvis. So sometimes we tend to push the pelvis forward or back. We'll find that nice in between position. My feet are far enough apart that I feel comfortable. Roll the shoulders up and back, palms forward, gaze forward. Beautiful. Starting with two breaths. On our inhale, reaching the arms up for upward salute or coming into our back bend, shining the heart forward, maybe gazing, up, gazing upward. On our exhale, hinging forward at the hips, bringing our hands down to blocks, to the mat, to our legs, whatever's comfortable. On our inhale, half forward fold, finding legs through the spine. And exhale back to forward fold. We can bring a bend into the knees, sweep the arms up for our upward salute or back bend. And then exhale, hands to your center and to the sides. Beautiful. So now we've gone through one either way. We can choose whatever works best for us. We might go a little bit faster now that we found all the asana in our body. So we're gonna go three more times. When we're ready, grounding through the soles of the feet, taking our two breaths. On our inhale, reaching up for upward salute or back bend. Exhale, hinging forward at the hips, hands to the block or mat. Beautiful. Inhale, half fold, moving through the spine. Exhale, coming back down. Bending the knees, reaching up for upward salute or back bend. Exhale, hands to your heart center and to the sides. Beautiful, two breaths. Inhale, reaching up, upward salute or back bend. Exhale, hinging forward, hands to blocks, feet or legs. 
Inhale, half fold, finding length from the spine. Exhale, forward fold. Bending the knees, sweeping the arms up. Exhale, hands to your heart center and to the sides. Beautiful. When we're ready, reaching up. Exhale, hinging at the hips. Inhale, half fold. Exhale, fold. Bending the knees, reaching up. And hands to your heart center. And to the sides. Beautiful. So we can take a moment here. Shake out. <clears throat> so by coming through our, I chose half sun salutations because they're fairly accessible seated and standing. But if you are familiar with any type of sun salutation or moon salutation, you can feel free to flow through as many times as feels comfortable um, as part of our kind of stress relief for the day, finding that rhythm and that movement. Sometimes that can feel really good and it can help us calm down. Um, if you're like me and you deal with a little bit of anxiety on top of everything else, sometimes we need a little bit more movement. So I'm going to offer <clears throat> a pulse practice as well, which is a little bit faster. It runs through three, um, three asana in a few different ways. Uh, so we'll be coming through Virabhadrasana 2 or Warrior 2, Exalted Warrior and Extended Side Angle. I'm going to demo first seated, and then we'll demo standing as well. And we have ways to dial this up or dial it down to make it as accessible as possible for folks. So <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do is find our seated position. We have a few options. So for warrior one, we can come into, I'm sorry, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two, we can come into this wonderful V position with the knees out, feet grounded, toes pointing out towards kind of the corners of the mat or corners of the room. If that feels good, we can stay there. We can also come along the side of the chair if that's more comfortable for us. We can also extend, we're gonna start by extending the right leg out to the side, which looks a little bit more familiar for folks who are familiar with Virabhadrasana too. So we have an extended right leg, a bent front leg, and then we're gonna introduce the upper body movements. So throughout, um, our cueing, the, the movements for the upper body are going to remain the same. We'll just keep this leg set up. So as we bring the hands towards heart center, we can reach out through the fingertips and gaze over the left fingertips. And we're in our Virabhadrasana one. So if we like, we can hold this position or we can start to introduce a little bit of dynamic movement into it. So if we like, we can inhale, reaching the arms up, exhale, coming back down. We also have the option to inhale up, bring the legs in, exhale out, extend the leg back out. So we can do both arms and legs at the same time. We can hold arms, just come into legs or just come into arms. So depending on what we need, we have plenty of different ways to get it. So we're gonna come through three pulses, so I'm going to start in my Virabhadrasana two, inhale, up, exhale, down. Beautiful. And then we're going to transition to our extended side angle. So we're going to flip the front hand, reach up, back hand then comes down to the back end of the line, onto the chair or onto the hand, the thigh, whatever feels comfortable. Reaching up with the left arm, gazing upward, we have our exalted warrior. And we can stay here or we can pulse again. So coming out and in with the arms, out and in with the legs. So we have so many different options here. We can just do the legs as well if we choose. And that is our extended side angle. Or, I'm sorry, our uh, exalted warrior. And then we're going to come into our extended side angle. We're gonna bring the front forearm to thigh, back hand up. We can either bring it up directly 
from the um, kind of right socket, or we can swing the arm around for our extended side angle. And this one we're going to hold in a static position for about three breaths. And then we have the option to flow through all three. So we're going to windmill the arms up through warrior two, continue up into exalted warrior, exhale back through exalted warrior, and down to extended side angle. Beautiful. So we'll do that one more time. Beautiful. We'll come back into our warrior two, bring the legs in and bring the arms down. I'm going to demo the standing version as well, and then we'll go through on either side. So a little bit of a break if we're seated. <clears throat> so if we're standing, we're going to start at the top of the mat in our Tadasana. We'll step our right leg back. Back at leg is near parallel with the edge of the mat. We have a bend in the front knee, as deep or as shallow as feels good. We'll reach the heart space along the length of the mat, arms out, gazing over the left fingertip, and we're in our warrior two. And if the arms start to get tired, feel free to always bring the hands down to the hip. For our pulse, we're going to inhale, straighten the front leg, reach the arms up, exhale down. Beautiful. We're going to continue this way. Beautiful. And for our exalted, we're going to flip the front hand, reach the front arm up, back hand on the back line. Beautiful. And to pulse. Inhale, straighten the leg, bring the arms out. Exhale. Beautiful. Beautiful. Last one. Then we're going to bring the front forearm to thigh. Back arm up, maybe again, swinging it around by the ear for extended side angle. We can also bring our hand down to a block in front of us or down to the mat, whatever's comfortable. And then we have our option to flow. So we're gonna ground down through the front foot, windmill the arms up, continue up with the front arm. Exhale through warrior two, continue down forearm to thigh. Left, I'm sorry, right arm in front. Beautiful, we'll continue two more times. Beautiful. And then we'll come back through our warrior two, step the back leg in and back into Tadasana. So now on our left side, we're all gonna practice together whether we're standing or seated. So if we're seated, we'll find our position this time we're gonna have the right leg bent, left leg extended, if we choose to practice that way. We'll all find our Tadasana, taking a deep breath. If we're standing, we're gonna go ahead and bring that left leg back this time. Bending in the right leg, arm open, I'm sorry, heart space open along the length. Arms out, gaze over the left finger, I'm sorry, right finger is this time. And we'll start our pulse. If we choose, inhale, reaching the arms up, straightening the front leg, exhale down. Beautiful. Beautiful. From here, we're going to flip the front hand, back hand on the back line of the leg, exalted, and pulse. Beautiful, last one. We'll come back through our warrior two, bend in the front knee, front forearm to thigh, back hand up or around by the ears, taking a few deep breaths here. And we'll start our flow, grounding down to the front foot, wind milling up, all the way through our exalted. Exhale all the way down through extended. Two more times, inhale up. Remember, you can take breaks whenever you need. Exhale down. This is my last one. Come back to warrior two. Step the feet together and release down. Beautiful. Take a moment and shake out. Take any movement you need here. 
I really like pulse movements for before I come into meditation or grounding or like a longer grounding. <laughs> um, because sometimes when I'm under stress, I just have this frenetic energy. Um, and this helps kind of get rid of some of that. Uh, but it also introduces that kind of repetitive, repetitive movement and focus on the breath that helps with increasing vagal tone. And as we start to calm and let the body relax, we're gonna to start to move ourselves into that rest or digest. Another few ways that we can do that is by focusing on a couple of particular asana. <clears throat> so if we like, we can have a seat in a chair or directly on the mat whatever is most comfortable for us. We'll take a moment to ground through the feet, through the sit bones, whatever we're sitting on, whether it's a bolster, the mat, or a chair. We're gonna reconnect to the breast and we're gonna bring one hand to the heart space, one hand to the belly. And we may just notice the movement that comes with our breath. Beautiful. When we're ready, we're going to come into a few series of twists. So if we like, we can bring our right hand behind the right bum or on the back of the chair, whatever's most comfortable for us. We'll find a length through the spine, ground down through the sit bones again. If we're seated on the mat, our legs can be out in a wide legged position. They can be in Baddha Panasana or butterfly with feet together, knees apart, or we can be sitting in cobbler or easy pose, anything that feels comfortable. I have a couple options for my hands. So if we like, as we begin to twist from the base of the spine, we can reach the hand across the body towards the opposite thigh, towards the belly, or we can place the right, I'm sorry, left hand against the inner thigh. To use that as a little bit of leverage if we like to push ourselves into the posture. Completely depends on what works for you. I'm gonna bring my hand against the thigh and I'm slowly gonna to start to rotate from the base of the spine towards the shoulders, opening up towards the left side. Taking a few deep breaths here. So we're not trying to push ourselves deeper into the posture. We're going until we feel a tiny bit of discomfort. And we'll take a few deep breaths here. It's kind of counterintuitive, but sometimes it's really helpful to bring ourselves to a place where we can relax a bit. And as we start to relax, those muscles start to release a bit and soften. So after we've taken a few breaths, we might choose then to go a little bit deeper if that feels good. Never pushing ourselves too far. Beautiful. When we're ready, we might release the hands and slowly float forward. We can take any movement that feels good here. And then we'll come into the opposite side. So I'm going to bring the opposite hand behind the bump. Same options for the right hand. I can bring it across the body or press it against the inner line of the right thigh. Slowly opening from the base of the spine towards the shoulders. Maybe bringing the chin in the direction of the shoulder, shoulders. Taking a few deep breaths here. Sometimes it's helpful if we feel comfortable closing the eyes. Introducing that little bit of darkness can also help us move into the parasympathetic nervous response. If we start to notice little rumblings in the belly, those are actually really good signs that rest and digest is starting. So it means we're moving into that parasympathetic nervous response. Beautiful. When we're ready, we can release the arms and slowly float forward. Beautiful. For some of us who maybe feel a bit constricted with seated, 
twist, I'd like to offer a standing twist as well. If we have a larger belly, sometimes the belly can hit the thighs and kind of hit the chest and everything pushes into the throat or we just don't feel like we have a lot of room to get the twist that we want. So we can also twist standing. So I'm gonna come into my Tadasana, whatever that looks like. Make sure that I feel connected, rooted, grounded through the feet, length through the spine. I might reach the arms up into upward salute. And then if I like, I might bring the left hand behind me, right arm in front, opening the heart space up towards the left side of the body. Taking as many breaths here as I like. Maybe noticing the knees. If you tend to hyperextend, you want to bring a bit of softness into the knees so that we're not hurting ourselves. And then when we're ready, we'll inhale up, bring the heart space forward. Then we'll bring the left hand forward, right hand behind us, opening up towards the right side. Again, checking those knees. A few deep breaths. And then we can reach the arms up and come back through center, releasing down. Beautiful. Twists are really helpful for moving us into the parasympathetic nervous response. It helps aid in digestion, uh, which is something that can get stalled when we're stressed. So along with the breathing, where the diaphragm pushes against the intestines and helps things move, Twists also help with that as well. So <clears throat> now that we've come through a little bit of movement, let's have a bit of uh, grounding meditation today. And then from here, we'll have a bit of time for Q&A in the end if anyone is interested. <clears throat> so we'll find a comfortable position. If we're at home or if we have space, we might recline in Shavasana or corpse pose lying on our back. Excuse me, maybe with a pillow or blanket beneath the knees. We also might like a blanket or eye pillow over the eyes, maybe pinching it around the bridge. By adding a little bit of weight and a bit of darkness, we can also help move ourselves into that parasympathetic nervous response. And we'll take a few moments, maybe revisiting our breath work from the beginning of class. So maybe starting with a few inhales through the nose, exhales through the mouth, if that feels good. Maybe with a bit of vocalization. Uh, and when we've taken as many of those as we need, we'll find our natural breath, noticing our inhale and exhale. We might take a moment, notice if we're holding tension through the muscles of the face. <clears throat> if so, on our exhale, we might start to release and relax those muscles. Maybe releasing the binding surfaces of the mouth. We might release the tongue from the roof of the mouth. We might let the shoulders be heavy, falling away from the ears. We might come back to the breath, noticing if we feel tension through the heart space or shoulders as we continue to breathe. If so, maybe on our exhale, see if we can let go of some of that tension, some of that stress. We might let the arms be heavy. We're in our chair, we can feel free to lean back against the chair if that's more comfortable for us. We might bring the hands somewhere against the body, maybe the lap the belly, the heart space, anything that feels good. You can tuck them in your pockets, under your belly, whatever feels comfortable. We'll let the feet be heavy <clears throat> and start to notice that connection between ourselves and the floor, the mat, ourselves in the chair any props we might be resting against, noticing the sensation in those areas, making contact, allowing ourselves to be heavy against the object, heavy against the floor, 
and heavy against the earth, no matter how far beneath us it is today. Noticing the unconditional support that the earth provides. we can find a great deal of connection through the earth. Not just a connection to the natural world, but also a connection to each other, to our loved ones, to those we care for, and those who care for us. No matter how far apart we are today, we are all resting upon the same earth. Our family, our chosen family, our teachers, It connects us through more than space. It connects us through time. We're resting upon the same earth as our ancestors. As the original stewards of the land, for where we are. Resting against the same earth that the founders of the cultural and spiritual practices that we still use today rest upon. It connects us forward as well. To those who come after us. All of these relationships, they're all part of our personal foundation. Foundations on which we can grow, on which we can rest, on which we can build. We can take the next few minutes to connect to these foundations, to take what we need for them today, whether that is rest, inspiration, familiarity, connection, whatever it is that we need today. If we start to notice the mind wander, that's okay. That's what minds do. If we need to find ourselves in the present, we can always come back to the breath. Or we can always notice the sensations in the body. And we'll be here for the next four minutes or so.
when we're ready, <clears throat> we might start to slowly begin to notice the breath. The inhale and exhale. We might start to notice the sounds of the space around us. <clears throat> the scent in the room and the sensation of the body against the chair, the mat, or the floor. We might start to slowly introduce a bit of movement into the body, maybe through the fingers, the toes, the head and neck. Taking any movement here that feels good. If we're reclined, we might choose to gently roll onto the right or left side. We, of course, can stay where we are if we're comfortable. If we like, we might start to bring the hands together, maybe rubbing them together to build a little heat. And when they feel warm, we might cup them gently over the eyes. Maybe slowly start to blink the eyes open inside of the hands for a little gentle awakening. Maybe pull the hands down along the face, bringing the hands to heart center or anywhere against the body that feels good. And we'll take three breaths together in a way that feels comfortable for us. We might take a moment to thank ourselves for making this space for movement, for rest. And I'd like to thank you very much for sharing your practice and your time with me today. We can bring any movement in that feels good, adjust our seat. We do have um, time for questions or for comments, if anybody has any today. Um, something that can also be really helpful after either a movement practice, especially when you've been really stressed out, or a meditation practice can be a bit of journaling or a bit of quiet time to think over things that might have come up for us. Um, yoga <laughs> has a wonderful way of bringing things that might have been kind of nagging under the surface right up to the top. Um, so that might be also a helpful way to kind of find out what other things might be bothering us throughout our practice. But if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask um, or type in the chat if you're here on Zoom before I turn it back over to Abby. And I know I can take a moment to kind of wake up <laughs> from a meditation or a uh, shavasana. So unmute. And if anyone has any questions here, feel free to ask. Just talk loud. <laughs> and if not, that's okay too. <laughs> We're all very relaxed. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And any any questions online in the chat or anything? Awesome. Yay. Well, thank you so, so much. This thank was amazing. So Yay. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I um, I hope that you guys raise lots of get lots of school supplies for your local school and uh thank you so much for having me i hope y'all yeah. have a relatively low stress school year <laughs> agreed you too <laughs> thank you. awesome well thank y'all again Yay. thank you <laughs> we'll see you soon thank you see you soon bye
podcast.